Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She-Ra and the Princesses of Power used to be called She-Ra, the Princess of Power, I think. Hmm. She-Ra and the Princesses of Power was a magical romp through Star Wars, Star Trek, and World of Warcraft. <laughs> I can explain. Hope so. She-Ra, the Princesses of Power was made in the 2018s, not yep. the 80s. <laughs> Correct. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, podcast in which you watch the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. It'll get better. Uh, we like to review cool. shows uh, based on your suggestions. And many, many, many of you suggested this one. Boy, oh boy. Co-captain is here, Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. Hello. We have a very special guest, Melissa Longo. She's an actress. She also makes stuff. Hi. Yeah. I make stuff. <laughs> Smiles, laughter, jokes, whatever. Mm -hmm. Makes it all. Not just fantastic acting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good jokes, bad jokes. You know, they run the gamut. My name is Ryan T. <laughs> Husk, and I loved She-Ra. Princess, just kidding. You're going to have to hang on to find out. <laughs> all like, right. That's that part already? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So don't forget. And you loved it, really? what Michael likes to remind us at the top of the show, which is to like this video, subscribe to this channel, give this podcast five stars. And if you'd like us to review a show in the comments below, please make your suggestion. You could say WTF Farscape or WTF Babylon 5. Of course, we've already done that one. WTF, of course, yeah, stands yeah. for watch the first. And parenthetically, please tell us where we can find it. Like, say it's mm -hmm, on mm -hmm. Netflix or Amazon Prime or I don't know. Good luck, you know. And then we'll be like, yeah, we're not gonna do that one. And, and just like, don't don't tell us that we have to like buy a DVD. Like, oh. we're not gonna buy it. <laughs> we're not gonna buy three DVDs to watch one first episode of a show. <laughs> Why? <laughs> no chance. And by the way, it doesn't have to be a show that you love, you guys. You can just have us review some weird show that you're curious to see how we'd react about, you know, like mm -hmm. whatever, no stress, whatever. So let's just hop into it and jump into our very first game. By the way, this first episode is called The Sword, part one. Part one. That's it. We're going to play our mm -hmm. favorite game, my favorite game. It's the Brian's first segment. Um, of many segments. Michael and I have known each other for so long, uh, as you can tell from our banter back and forth. It's so cute. And uh, we can usually predict if the other person liked it. So, Michael, I predict, I predict that you liked some aspects of this show, but for the most part and overwhelmingly, you felt like this was a show for babies mm. and you will give it subpar marks but not like bottom dwelling marks you know but definitely down there melissa i think you are going to give it above water marks you're going to be given you know like mm. a like a seven or something because you're going to be like yeah you yeah and uh you will have enjoyed this for the most part, but you will have a couple qualms with it. You will say, I didn't like, you know, this or that or whatever, but for the most part, Michael, what do you think? Well, I, Ryan, Ryan, I've never really heard him talk about She-Ra like he talks about He-Man. He loves He-Man. What's He-Man? He loves it. He loves He-Man. Um, he man loves me. It's like mutual. He, Don't act I, like I'm. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I bet you. I bet so that's right. I bet that's absolutely true. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I, I, I feel like he didn't really watch Shira when he was a little baby tadpole. Um, so there's not going to be any nostalgia for him coming to watch Shira 
now in these times from the 2018 times. So, but based especially on his prediction of what I'm going to think, I'm going to say Ryan is not going to like this show. He's definitely going to think that this is very immature. He's <laughs> going to think that it's stupid, that the plot <laughs> is preposterous, and that he it's not for him. He doesn't care for it, and he doesn't care about it. Melissa, however, mm. I think will be opposite of that, where she did like it. She thought it was cute. The animation was cute and that the story was was cute and interesting and kept her attention. And so she's going to be plus on it. Did she like the characters? Oh, yeah, she did. <laughs> you had, oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, yes. Lisa, what's your predictions for Michael and myself? All right. So um, I always feel like I'm, a, I'm cheating a bit because you guys know each other so well <laughs> that, that would why make we it go to first we're too. Cheating. yeah we're giving you hints right yeah but um from what i know of y'all and you know us uh, pretty well <laughs> there were moments when i was watching this where i thought mike would say this show is for babies <laughs> <So> <laughs> he needs a shirt that says this show is for babies <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm not sure how favor, favorable you would will find this show. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and then, um, Ryan, this is so, you are so not the target audience for this show. <laughs> so. Um, but how much is he not the target audience? So much. Whoa. According to her. So not the target audience for this show. So um, I, I don't foresee high marks from him either. <laughs> okay, everybody, you've gotten some pretty big hints. Now, do you like to play things safe? Do you like to say, okay, let me average out the, the predictions and make my predictions based on that? Or do you think, you know what? I'm going to go against the grain. I've got a gut instinct that tells me these guys are wrong about so-and-so. Whatever it is, make your predictions now. You can say whether we liked it or disliked it. If you want to get super bold, you can predict actual scale of one to 10 numbers. Say, you know, I think Melissa, Melissa gave it a seven or whatever you want to predict. Um, but do that now in the comments below or in the live chat. You got a lot of hints, but here's one final hint. While you're typing that in, Michael Cannon Rosenberg is going to tell you, what's this show even a boot anyway? Shira, princess of power, <laughs> leads a rebellion to free her land of Etheria from the monstrous invaders, the Horde. In this episode, on the planet Etheria, Adora, a young captain of the Horde, discovers a hidden sword that seems strangely meant for her. <laughs> I love when you do that. <laughs> I do too. It's great. I especially love when I do it when you when you're on because you're, uh, you're dying of laughter right now. Yeah, her face exploded when you started talking, Mike. <laughs> she went, <"No!"> <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys, fun's over, everybody. Fun or is it just beginning? Over. It is now time for my favorite segment because I'm a masochist and I hate fun. And this is where we compare and contrast what we expected before we watched this first episode with what we actually got. Michael deviously likes to call it. Expectations. What we expected, what we got. Expectations. Oh, it's <laughs> evil. It's evil. <laughs> Boy, you better not be having fun right now, everybody, because this is not that. <laughs> 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 so uh michael before you watch this first episode of she-ra and the princesses of power entitled the sword part one what did you expect if anything i mean really the only thing that i could expect is a reboot 
of a baby's TV show that I saw. <laughs> I only saw maybe two episodes when I was a kid. You know, we all watched He Man. We all watched He Man. Yeah, back back when I was a baby. We all back when I was a baby baby, we all liked to watch He Man because we were babies back then. We like you know, He Man for babies too. And so a couple of times I think I was like, let me check out the She Ra. What's the She Ra about? I think it's a She Ra, but uh, I say She Ra. Uh, let's just check it out, see what it's about. So I feel like I maybe saw two episodes. Also, you know, back then it's like I'm a boy. I like boy stuff like G.I. Joe and He-Man. Hell yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you're like, oh, that's for girls. That's for girl babies. I watch shows for man babies. So <laughs> that's kind of what I expected. <laughs> it's just a reboot of that show from when I was a kid that I saw a couple episodes. Of. Mm-hmm. I Michael, really don't remember anything about Michael calls it She-Ra. I call it Sheree. Um, Melissa. What did you expect before you watched this first episode of Sheree? Shara. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Um, I expected Era. to see... <laughs> Spera, the goddess of not gods. Okay. <laughs> um, I expected to see a show... That sparked oh. nostalgia for my childhood because I did watch She-Ra and I did ah. watch this. I did have the She-Ra action figures. Whoa! As a kid. <laughs> and uh, I had uh, He-Man action figures too, and they would play ah. together. Nice. Did they play nice together or did they battle? No, they played nice together. She ran he <laughs> man not, were twins. I don't think that's but they're yeah, that's what I thought I remembered. I thought I remembered yeah. that they were like brother and sister or something. They're they're twins that were separated at birth. I never understood why mm. she wasn't called she woman. Yeah, I don't know. Because it's he man, but whatever. This is you're the she perfect girl. you're the perfect guest for us, then Melissa, because you yeah. were a she ra fan. Uh mm-hmm. I myself I, I I may have watched one or two episodes of She-Ra mm-hmm. and I may have watched one or two episodes of He-Man per week <laughs> all my life per, per hour and yeah so I yeah I'm a big He-Man fan and you know I wish it was real whatever um <laughs> especially when I was a kid which hasn't ended yet and so yeah. you know this because you know watching this I, I didn't have high expectations because, you know, I realize I'm not a baby anymore. And so sometimes, you know, it's not really for you, uh, but it's newer. So maybe it's, it's good. You know, I didn't really expect anything, to be honest. I didn't really necessarily expect to like it for obvious reasons. It just, you know, uh, as Melissa said, I'm not necessarily the target audience for this. Probably was my guess. But, uh, you know, very, very little expectations just kind of went into it saying, all right, let's, let's see what happens. I had, you know, I, I assumed that it would be a kid's cartoon. Uh, but Michael, that's what we expected. Here's the key. Mm-hmm. What did we actually get? Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, everybody. If Ryan were on Eternia, he'd be called he boy. Um, so what I actually got was an exciting magical fueled romp through Eternia. I wow. liked this show. Contrary to Ryan's beliefs, I, I thought I thought I liked this. I thought that I liked it and I thought that I liked it and I did. Hmm. Hmm. Melissa, uh, what about you? What did you actually get and how much did you actually like this show for real? Um, <clears throat> I got a show that didn't take me on the adventure that I was expecting and uh I got a show with a lot of annoying bickering adolescence (laughs) I'm sorry that we do that on this show too Melissa we didn't know you had a problem with that (laughs) well all right okay there's a little bit of role reversal going on here feels like um 
Well, I'll tell you what I got. What I got mm-hmm. was a show that was, boy, I'm trying not to have dead air, but I'm really thinking hard here on how to describe it. I guess what I got was a show that was, uh, you know, it was okay. Um, I thought the, the, the writing was okay. <laughs> I guess it was okay. Um, ah, that's you should have really, written this down before we started recording. I certainly didn't get an exciting romp out of it. Uh, but what I did get was something that I could tell was going to be much more sophisticated writing than what we got back in the 80s. And mm-hmm. I was actually pleased and impressed with uh, the storyline. But even more than the storyline was where I could see the story going, that they've got this whole big, long, huge story mapped out, which I think is just higher quality uh, storytelling for kids. And I think that kids will and should enjoy it more than what we got in the 80s, because what we got in the 80s was pretty trash writing and we loved it. So imagine if we got Mm -hmm. good writing. That's what I got. Mm. I'm trying to imagine it. Yeah, take your time. You've earned it. Yeah. So, so, so Star Wars, they talk about the rebellion. Star okay. Trek, you have a cation. Star Trek, you have a cation. Hmm. And World of Warcraft for the horde. Come on. Come on, you guys. But the horde was from He Man. <laughs> and She Ra. And, and well, yeah, She-Ra, <laughs> that's true. Uh, yeah, the, the, the Horde was very established in the 80s version, and so was the Rebellion. So what do you guys want to talk about first? We want to talk about what we liked about the show, what we didn't like about the show, or our favorite characters? Or should we leave I it up some, to the live chat right now? I have some questions for Melissa. Yeah, mm. get it up. Um, While everybody tabulates so, their votes. Right. So you were saying that the Horde was a, an established part of, mm-hmm. of She-Ra. And then Ryan, you said that it was an established part of He-Man as well. Yes. Yeah, I think the character was Hordak was introduced and yeah. his Horde in He-Man. And then later on, they created She-Ra and the Princess of Power. She-Ra, the Princess of Power. You know, I don't know how further down the line, but just one or two years after He-Man was created. And then I believe that Hordak and the Horde ended up being the main bad in She-Ra yeah. and He-Man's main bad remained Skeletor. But at the beginning, initially, right. Hordak and his Horde was introduced as like a second group of bad guys that was also at odds with Skeletor's crew. So it was almost like three factions huh. at that point, which I thought was yeah, really I was cool wonder if, and interesting. If yeah. they were like working with Skeletor. Yeah, that's interesting. I think that they, they were, were against Skeletor too. I think they were yeah. enemies. Are they, are they aliens or something? They're all like aliens or mad. I mean, they you know, they don't, He-Man's not really that intricate. They're just like, oh, they're monsters and they're spaceships and there's swords and magic. It's just kind of every single thing that kids like. <laughs> Put in a dump trucks. We don't care. Just do it. But yeah, but Melissa, Melissa, so Hordak was the was, main was, bad guy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. But was was Adora raised by the Horde? Mm-hmm. The original She-Ra? Oh. Yeah, she she was kidnapped by them as a baby. Mm. Mm. Wow, so yeah. it really mm. so it really followed along with the original story with the source material. Right. I did not so know they, that. They took took this story from the source material. Like all there, of these there, characters there were princess? in the original. No, that's new. She was oh. she was the princess of power. Wait, what was the new part? That there was more that, than that, one princess. That was there oh, yeah. was more than one princess. Yeah, okay. But okay. Glimmer, Glimmer, Glimmer was in the original though. She was in the original. And Bo oh, she wasn't a princess. And Bo was in the original. And Kyle yep. and Katra. Yep. Wow. Who knew? Uh yeah, but can we Melissa just Lisa did? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a Pegasus, it looks like, later on. Yeah, yeah. I had one of those horses, too. I think that's her growler. 
That's her My Little Pony. Cringer. Her Cringer. Yeah. Cringer. Crowler is something else. Cringer and Battle, Battle Cat. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, but speaking of the princesses Cringer. of power and the difference there, yeah. I think the reason that there's a difference there is because the people in the 80s had were smart about what a princess means and people in 2020 were not smart about what a princess means. If they're all princesses, then that's not what princess means. If you have an entire village of princesses, then they're not actually princesses. <laughs> you got, oh, they could be princesses from different places and come together into one village. Boo, boo, no. Nope, yeah, but nope, that's no, not you're wrong, how Ryan. it was. It, it's like, not how it was. It's not like Gelfins that were royalty from different clans. It's just everyone's a princess in this Yeah, one. that's not possible. <laughs> that's the thing is I'm like, if, if everybody is a princess, then you need to rethink the word princess because that you just mean people. You just mean yeah. a, alive. They could all be sisters too. Then they're all princesses. Yeah. Have you thought about be, that? They, then they would be straying from the source material. And that would Ooh, make how glimmer. dare they. And then that would make <laughs> Glimmer's mom Adora's mom too. But I mean, obviously. Adora is a princess from a different part of Eternia where Adam comes from too, because she's his sister, right? I don't know. It makes sense to me that they're princesses. Like there's, there can be more than one princess in a world, Ryan. Yeah. But if the entire village is made up of princesses, then they're not You've got really a princess princesses. of England. You have a princess of Spain. Yeah, but in Spain. In the, back in the day, they're not in the back same in the day, village. Uh, well, they could I guess they come could together. Be, they, could they could have a party and all be together in the same place. Or all be kidnapped. But I doubt that that's the case. But we'll see. We don't know whether you make a good argument. It's possible that they just captured every single princess of the planet, except for Tila, and made a, a colony of all princesses. But we immediately know that something is amiss when the guy's like, oh, princesses, they're they're bad people or whatever, whatever he said, they they mm -hmm. create mischief or they're a pro right. vicious and violent instigators, princesses are. And I was mm -hmm. like, hang on a yep. second. So clearly we're on the, the wrong side of this story here for now. <laughs> but I thought well, that's you see the horde area and it's all industrial and ugly, and then you go to where the princesses are, and it's all beautiful and magical and it's like my little pony. Mm, a little bit. Okay, so Is Melissa, it? did you have a favorite character? Oh, sorry. Michael, what do you think we should call this segment in which we discuss <laughs> our favorite characters? Well, it's obviously, obviously called Fabcac. Oh, wait, did everybody our vote for that? Our looks... favorite character. Uh, well, they don't have to because I am the I think they said what, what we didn't like first, but yes, you've got veto power and, and uh but uh yeah i i called it favcac despite what ryan thinks and i can do what i want and it's called favcac even though it makes more sense if it's favcark but it sounds better to say favcac favchark favcac so my favcac uh is probably catra location mm -hmm. she's Why? getting into mischief She's kind of, she can jump up and down all over the place like a cat can. And cats are cute. You know, who, who doesn't love cats yeah. amongst us? Yeah, that and is a true is statement. Not nobody. Melissa, you're also a cat mm. lover. Uh, who's mm -hmm. your favorite character? Was it She-Ra? Favcac. Um, it was Shadow Weaver. Shadow Ooh. Weaver. Yeah, and Katra was a, a second, but Shadow Weaver was. Interesting. Ooh. Now, are you basing this off of Shadow Weaver being your favorite character in the original show? No. Mm -hmm. Who is your favorite character in the original show? Probably She-Ra. <laughs> mm. mm. She-Ra, I wanted to be just like the Princess of Power. You <laughs> practically are. You're almost there. Mm -hmm. 
Just a little uh, bit more power and you've got it. And then, yeah, a little more royalty and you're all set. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. All, you, all you need, all, all the only thing that you're missing is a magic sword. So there you go. Mm-hmm. I know. And then the, the power will come and the princess will come. Uh, well, I'll tell y'all my favorite. Oh, shoot. Wait, no, mm-hmm. Melissa, keep telling us Bad about check. your favorite character so I could decide. No, it's your turn. It's your turn. No, you have to, uh, can't Weaver. believe you don't know that we're going to do this already. Like, you know <laughs> that these are the questions that you are going to ask us. And so before the show starts, like while you're watching the show, making your notes, see, I'm buying you time right now. While you're watching I've the decided. show, making your notes, you should be <laughs> writing this down and deciding then. Okay, what is it? It's this? Kyle. No, I'm just kidding. No, Kyle was a loser. God dang, dude. I'm I know. Create. These characters are terrible. How can he um, be a part of the Hordak? Lord Hordak was my favorite character. Lord we didn't Hordak. See Hordak. We didn't see him. I pictured him when they mentioned him, though. <laughs> oh, if we have to base, I mean, because he was cool, you know, if we have to base it now, if we have to base this on characters that we actually saw rather than and just we do heard, okay and then do. there was a the lizard point of this <laughs> there was a yeah, lizard guy the first... in, there was a lizard guy in adora's crew uh he said one or two things he looked cool and then i, I don't after, think he was in the crew i think he was uh i think he was like telling them to go like no 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 that was no that was the drill sergeant guy but then there was also a lizard guy that oh, was like yeah her and another mm. girl and kyle and then like a lizard guy and then the drill sergeant yeah. was kind of like a furry blue guy uh but there was a lizard mm. kid um mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll just pick him because he looked interesting furry blue guy <laughs> looked like he might be interesting too but i then i started thinking i was like i wonder if he's a derivative of like moss man or something and i was like wait was mm. no moss man was a good guy and then i just got lost trying to remember what the horde characters <laughs> were i think there was a leech guy and a stinkor there was a leech guy yeah and stinkor and yahoo skunk guy did hypnotizing rays oh no that was a different guy who had a whole bunch of legs see i don't remember any of this stuff at all like i can't believe i guess ryan knew them from he-man so that's how he knows them but uh... yeah i remember the toys and stuff Mm -hmm. um but we didn't we did they didn't play nice when we had toys they didn't Mm -hmm. play that wasn't the point they're not given swords and armor to to giggle (laughs) <laughs> that's well, me fighting my toys Maybe. played with with you know like gem and the holograms and barbie and the rockers ah, so you know that's a universe totally right outrageous there. yeah <laughs> yeah that's fun. full of magic okay hey wtf gem and the holograms yes but yes. where to find it let us know where to find it if you do want to suggest yeah, it we do in need the to comments know where to find it below because in the live chat it's just gonna go away but if you give it to us in the comments below it's gonna disappear you never know there forever (laughs) whose favorite character was Bo? wait who was who considered Bo their favorite character probably somebody probably an archer somewhere yeah he was a magical archer dumb (laughs) He he was dumb in this show <laughs> was he not dumb in the original no he wasn't was kyle dumb in the original and there was no kyle <laughs> oh so they just they just created a kyle just to make him a, a dummy <laughs> yeah. yeah i don't know why why they, these cadets are going to be part of the horde because they're not scary at all <laughs> okay can i ask this question since we're we're on this topic um, okay if they're having a war against mm-hmm. this race or this group that's destroying and wiping everything out, or if you're the horde and you are trying to dominate and destroy this country or whatever, okay, would you A, train your children to go fight, you know, just train a bunch of eight-year-olds to go fight your wars for you? Or would you yourself fight the war? Both. Yeah. yeah. Both. Yeah. Well, I think it was really weird that they're like sending out kids to fight their war. I think you have a much 
higher success rate oh if you are you fighting kids yourself. with magical powers but they didn't really have magical powers i mean glimmer glimmer well no they were tr- the cadets and the whatever. horde was training a bunch of children to go fight and oh, I'm like, i thought you were oh. talking about glimmer no i'm talking mm-hmm. about well the cadets. horde the horde they, the horde doesn't give a sh- they don't care about people. Come on. They're just like, eh, just uh, send those kids out to, you know, whatever. Yeah, I'm talking about success rate. I'm like, right. training, you're wasting well, your time training kids when you could just be training adults and going and fighting your wars. But then your adults Although, die and then you lose your And adults who's training are... them? Right. You know I'm right. right. You know nobody's going to send their train, waste their time training kids for battle when they is... could just fight themselves. This is not necessarily true because a lot Mm -hmm. of extremist groups take children and start brainwashing them from young, but they don't necessarily send them out onto the battlefield right away. Yeah, they were clearly give them a bomb and go blow them up. They were clearly well, that too training them to go fight like tomorrow or next week. No, yeah, they weren't saying when you go out to battle in twelve years. (laughs) <laughs> right no but it was like they were going to put these kids on the front line and they obviously aren't Our kids exactly oh they're not really kids i mean it seems like she's a teenager or something Adora, still- you're talking about and, and her crew they're yeah, teenagers I I, I well, pre-teens at least they, they don't seem like they're eight to me okay a glimmer looks like she was eight okay like so- well Okay, let's say let's let's say somewhere between eight and fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay. Cool. <laughs> still, still, these are not people that I would want to follow in battle or but be intimidated also, by. <laughs> I'll tell you what though, if I'm at war with somebody tra- and they're sending trained, their kids, I'd be very happy and confident we're gonna win. I'd be like, oh, this is gonna be since easy. You're, if you're trained since you're a baby, though. If you've been training since you're a baby to be a killer, you're going to be pretty good by the time you're 15. I could handle a battalion of 11-year-old badasses. You think? Well, because that's what you think. He's he's got the life experience as well as probably superior strength over these little people. Who does? Ryan? Well, you think yeah, Ryan I mean, could take some... on a battalion of trained of killers trained from birth? False. Hell yes, hell yes. False. And if well, it weren't a horrible thing anything, to think about, I would He-Man welcome could. it. I would dominate. <laughs> it, it would be like me going a bunch of, going against a bunch of good eleven year old basketball players. I still like my chances. Mm. I still like my chances, and it would be I fun. You'd about... feel like you'd feel like a god. You'd be like. You grab them by the legs and use them as a weapon against the other one. You'd be like, <laughs> just, just you would feel like King Kong, yeah. you know. Now, obviously, you'd be MMA, dead in maybe, two seconds. You'd be dead in MMA, two seconds. Yeah. Maybe, but not basketball. <laughs> a, yeah, especially not if there's like weapons it. involved, and they've been training since birth. Well, I'm gonna have a weapon too. Remember, yeah, I used you one haven't of been them. training since birth. Okay. Well, well, I guess it's kind of like Arya from that? Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. Oh, Arya, yeah, yeah. She was like 18. Arya? Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I would be more scared of her than I was of anybody on the horde. Totally, Everybody except maybe that lizard hand, guy. Yeah. You never know. That lizard guy might have like special powers yeah. or something. I don't and, know, uh, but he Kat- got Kat- Kat- out too. By- she can jump around. Well, that's true. Okay, how cute was it that Catra was sleeping at the foot of what's her name's bed? Oh, I thought that was super. Cute. I, I thought that was a I smart addition. I did not addition. like that at all. <laughs> I no, did Lisa, not like that at all. Why? No, because yeah, it, it felt cat. like such no, a stereotype, she's, right? She's part cat, and why was it she didn't she have her own bed? I mean, as a, why is she only it, part cat? Because she's. She's a part cat. Mochi doesn't stand up and talk to me and and yeah, she does. You just don't understand her. The oh. same kind of language that you know that we I thought she was a cat cat being, cat cat race, like a cation. Yeah, I and I get that and I 
figured that argument would come up, <laughs> but <laughs> but it, it in the lore like, you're saying she's half cat. Well, yeah, I mean these are only part; they're like hybrids of beings, and and Katra is as equal a being as Adora, but. Mm-hmm. Her sleeping at the foot of her bed, me, me, to me, felt like she was a lower being. I thought it was a funny little cute nod and wink, but it does bring up yeah. a, a good point, Melissa, that do the Thundercats all fight over the foot of the bed and like sleep in boxes <laughs> and like nobody actually sleeps in the, the bed itself, but they're all like, I well, want they, the foot. They, want- they but there was no they bed are- for her anyway. There, Every other bed was oh, that's taken. Rude. Except yeah, for kind of rude. The one that at least she give was her a box. On. Yeah, she's like, "Where's my bed?" They're like, "Guess you can find any foot of the bed will be fine." You're a cat. <laughs> you, what do you know? Go lick some milk. Yeah, <laughs> it just struck me as weird, and I got where they were coming from because cats sleep at the foot of the bed. Funny. But but was she like genetically engineered, or did somebody do something wrong with a cat or something like that? That's my know. question. I have no idea. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well, hmm. surprise. Hmm. I, I thought it was cute and funny, but you know, <laughs> tomato, tomato there. Uh, yeah. What did you guys actually, okay, Michael, you were all over okay. this show for some reason. Yeah. Uh, yes. <laughs> what did yeah. you like about it? What What's so great about it? Well, fantasy, magic, World of Warcraft. What's not to like? right okay so that's the genre but yeah but there was magic in the show it was there's obviously we talked about this when we've done the the two he-man shows that we've reviewed it's a world of magic it's a world of magical beings um, monsters it's a cool world that would be scary to live in frankly because of all the but also exciting monsters but also exciting, especially if you had some of that magic. If I had a magic sword, I would not feel intimidated at all about living on Eternia. If you had a magic sword, though, would you, would you sleep with it in your Etheria, bed for protection? In or in would, would you have the sword <laughs> under your bed just to like have it at the ready? Or would you just like put it away yeah. and be like, I'll be fine? I would definitely have it at the ready, especially if there's a world with monsters and skeletons that can talk. So lots of monsters, buff skeletons that can talk buff. By the way, Michael uh, brought up an interesting point that we forgot to mention at the top here. When he mentioned fantasy, this is the final review in our mm-hmm. month of fantasy, fantasy month. Everybody fantasy knows month the fantasy that may is the month of fantasy reviews. Let's tell you what we've just done here in May. Mm-hmm. First, so the we first did, week of May, we did Star Wars Lego Droid Tales, which is science fantasy. We get it close science enough. fantasy, yeah, yeah. Uh, but close it was first. Enough. Plus, it was it was Star Wars Day too. So. Exactly. So you got to do it. Don't don't be, yeah. be that guy. Right. You know. Right. Uh, then we did the Legend of Vox Machina with Sasha Kerbel. Yes. Check that mm-hmm, out. That mm-hmm. was on Amazon. Uh, that was episode 111. The Star Wars one was 110 with Rico Anderson and Darth Shuey. Uh, then we did Wheel of Time, also fantasy, mm-hmm. also on Amazon mm-hmm. with our good buddy Darnell Davis. Davis. And this is going to be the <laughs> last one, she with Melissa Longo. And then we will move on to another month that'll be Ooh. like themed. What's the theme? Oh, or do we know? Yeah, I think we do know. I don't think we do. I don't think we have a theme for next month. But uh, oh yeah, right. July though. Yep. Should we give it away right yeah. now? Yeah. What July? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. July is comedy month, so it's going to be a month. Oh, that's right. Of comedy I reviews. Almost forgot. Comedy and reviews. then August will be superhero month. Superhero, <gasps> you know, like Marvel, DC, all kinds of different goodies. Mm-hmm. And then after that, September will be animated month. Wow, ah, this is oh. just much fun. Oh, and then October, everybody then October. knows. It. Say it with us: horror month. Horror month. <laughs> no horror, Melissa. 
Wow. <laughs> you're a little too excited about that. I like horror. <laughs> no, it's perfect for Halloween and October. Yeah. So it's going to be a good time. And then November, Thanksgiving month. Mustache month. <laughs> <laughs> all right anyway November. um was there anything else you liked about it michael yeah i mean so first of all right off the bat i noticed that those made by dreamworks so that yes. kind of helps set my expectations a little higher and think okay this is actually going to be this is actually going to have some quality Me to too. It too and a netflix original i said netflix of original and i was like okay and then it said mm -hmm. DreamWorks. Right. And i said okay so they're stepping I'm up listening here. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did I like? Nothing. No, I did. I, I, I liked a lot about it. I didn't really make a lot of notes because I was watching it. I was just enjoying it. I liked the pace. The pace went by quickly. Uh, like it, there was not like lulls where you're like, oh boy, is this going to, I have to wait for this next scene forever. No, it went by, it, 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 it kept moving. And like, she touches the sword in her dream. And then all of a sudden, like, she's like transported to this place and then she wakes up, she can't find it. So she is like driven. She wakes up in the middle of the night and is like, I got to go find that sword because she has another dream. And she finds the sword. When she touches it, she has the dream again, except more information this time. So it was just, it kind of led me along on her journey of discovery, which made me interested in it. Melissa, how do you feel about discovery? I mean, her journey of discovery. Um, to be honest, I got a little bored. Please. Um, it, <laughs> I, I did. I got bored with the, the way they told the story was everyone is bickering with each other. And, uh, and I got tired of it. <laughs> um, and yeah there was some good parts about how she discovered the sword in the woods um i i just felt like that glimmer was if if this sword is destined to be with adora then how did glimmer get it away from her so easily if when she touches it the sword knows that it's meant to be with adora so why would it be so easy for Glimmer to get it away from her? And I You've just obviously didn't... never been around a sword that's meant for somebody. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not like the sword in the stone. It's, it's in a bush of thorns. I mean, come on. Anybody can just grab it. I did, I did picture that it, I, when I first saw the sword, I did wonder if people were going to try to pull it and it was only going to work for her like the sword in the stone, but that didn't happen. Well, well I did picture Camelot in... Mm -hmm in a way went with the way they were approaching this story. And I, I, I just didn't, if, if you're the chosen one to wield that sword, the sword knows that there, that's always in the lure of, you know, something like the sword and the stone. So the sword knows that, that it belongs with Adora. And uh, I think there would be some, some consequence to Glimmer touching the sword or anybody else touching the sword, whether it's like an, a shock of some sort or uh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm realizing what, what really didn't grab me was the lack of cool characters. And by cool characters, I mean, enjoyable, interesting, or good characters in that, what I liked about He-Man as a kid mm -hmm. uh, wasn't so much about the magic, which I know Michael likes, but for me, it was just all these cool, different, weird, interesting characters. There's, you know, this monster guy and that monster guy, and they all have different superpowers and everybody, every character is a different race, has different powers, has different personalities. Whereas mm -hmm. this was just all a bunch of humans and one furry. And like, yeah. we didn't see. Stay tuned for part two, Ryan. This is just part one. Right. Well, that's, I'm just talking about part one. And, you know, like I liked He-Man for all of the interesting monster characters and how they were all different. And this didn't really have any of that. I mean, it had one lizard guy that had like two lines. There was one blue furry guy that had like two lines. Other than that, everybody was a human. Cat lady. Or looked like a human. Yeah, the furry. Uh, you know, so <laughs> that was a little less interesting to me. 
Maybe that's why. Yeah. No, I, I, and I actually, after watching the first episode of this, I watched the first episode of the 80s She-Ra okay. to refresh mm. my memory. And like Ryan was saying, there was all these different creatures and fun creatures like Cowl. Mm-hmm. I had a little Cowl and he was this cute rainbow owl that was um, Bo's sidekick. And Bo in the up 80s one was, wasn't an idiot. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I did I put it. the word idiot in my notes too. It's just FYI. Yeah, I, it, it's just, why does he have to be an idiot? He didn't have to be a, a, an idiot in the old thing to be effective. And, and then there was Scorpia and then Ooh. Leech and... Yes. Um, uh, these all these other interesting characters and Glimmer was awesome. Part of the Horde, yeah, but Glimmer was awesome and she had her special powers and then um, there was this this old woman who rode on a broom and her eyes were covered with the thing and very interesting character. It's a witch. You know, kooky. She was crazy and kooky, but fun. And you know, I, so I, it sounds like it sounds like uh, the first episode of the 80s She-Ra dropped you right into the middle of the story, whereas this is a beginning, uh, an origin story. And it's probably going to introduce those characters one by one. Like I would imagine that the guy's owl sidekick will pop up at some point because I feel like that's a good character and they should include that. So, you know, I'm not saying that they won't have those characters. Right. I'm just saying that this first episode didn't and it, it felt a little lacking in that regard for me. Well, and they were both kind of an introduction and they used He-Man and the old one to introduce the new characters that we were meeting for the first time. Mm. Yeah, He-Man was good at introducing people. He was always polite about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a prince, you know. Yeah, well, apparently yeah. everybody's a princess, so. Yeah. Except for Bo. Except for Bo. He lamented that fact. Except for Bo. <laughs> I'm the only one who isn't a princess. <laughs> yeah. Well, he, maybe someday, Bo. Oh, they needed to bring together all the princesses of power to fight the Horde, Ryan, obviously. So get the over The other thing it. was, which is kind of another aspect of this, is that, and this is kind of a lot of people's complaint about, you know, newer Star Trek things like Discovery. So I'm not trying to connect myself to them, but I do realize that this sounds similar is that it didn't feel like He-Man or She-Ra to me. It felt like uh, the only the only references that I got to that old, you know, cartoon that I remember was mentioning Hordak, mentioning mm-hmm. the Horde, and mentioning Grayskull, but I didn't mm-hmm. actually see anything that was in any any way reminiscent, except maybe the sword looked a little familiar. It didn't look or feel so, like what I remember seeing as a kid. Yeah. What I'm hearing is that both of you were let down because this show was not close enough to the originals from the 80s that were meant for us as children, not for children these days. Well, well. Yes and no. Yep, yes and yep, no. Yes. Yeah, I heard I heard yes. Only because my other qualm with this show is what most shows nowadays are doing um with with otherworldly universes in that they use language that is from 20th first century Melissa, America. Melissa language. Oh. Yeah, I mean um Katra was like, I don't even care, like whatever. And, <laughs> it, and it, why would why would she talk like that? I, I want to be immersed in a different universe altogether. She, I am he man. Well, I mean, at least it's a different way of speaking. But um, this is, you know, you can walk down the street and and hear this, you know these dialogue conversations between kids on this, you know, out in the world now. It sounds like, sounds to me like the two of you thought the show was for babies. Well, I'll tell you what I did like though, 
was that I thought that it moved quickly. I thought, I thought that's what we were talking about. And you guys were both kind of like, well, what I didn't like. <sighs> were we? I don't remember. I, I don't remember anything anyway. We did um, start that way. but <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what I liked was that it, it moved quickly. Um, and if I felt like it wrote a first episode in something that clearly has big picture in mind. They're trying trying to write a big, epic, in-depth, intricate, and nuanced story. And this is just the first chapter in that. So even if I didn't, you know, jump for joy about this first episode, I could see that it has enormous potential because they're setting, this is, they're just writing this first chapter. And it's very clear mm -hmm. that it's going to be something that continues to grow and grow and grow. And you're going to, you're going to meet Hordak. We're going to see Hordak at some point, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to see another bad guy and another, and it's going to keep growing and growing and growing. And she and her crew are going to have to figure that out. I also thought it was very cool. I didn't know they did this in the original she but I thought it was a brilliant idea that we start off watching the story from the bad guy's perspective, basically. Mm -hmm. And I found myself wondering when she leaves and goes to help the princesses of power at some point, whether it's episode two or the end of the first season, I don't know, but probably pretty soon when she does that, is her crew going to come with her or is Katra going to now be like the head of the cadets of the bad guys? You know what I mean? Like, how is that going to work out? Because I think it would be a really good story if, Katra, Katra remained there and they all did. And then she actually has to fight her best friend, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of story. And so they're creating a, a world and a, a situation in which really good actual adult themed storytelling can be told in a children's cartoon. So I think the big picture, it's going to end up being a really well-written uh, show. Mm. Okay. All right. That, I guess that's it. <laughs> babies, babies are a lot smarter these days than we were. Right. Well, the people write oh. for babies a lot smarter. Back in the day, they're just like, just do any old thing. Throw the guy in the mud. The kid will laugh. Who cares? And we're like, yeah, okay. it's funny. He threw him in the mud. Took him to the cleaners. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's. Mm-hmm. I don't know that I consider bickering. Uh, She's higher obsessed with this quality. <laughs> yeah, because it's really annoying. <laughs> well, I think what that is, that's execution of, you know, like they, they write out this big story with a, with a big outline and all these different characters. And then the execution is what we're kind of nitpicking right now, which is, sure. you know, kind of yeah. how the, the characters actually interacted with each other. Uh, but yeah, I agree with that. Sounds a little bit like we're bickering. Yeah. Speaking of bickering, Melissa Longo, it's time to talk about you, by the way. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> so erase Shira Shire from your mind and harness Hurrah. your inner Melissa. I think I didn't do that. <laughs> All right. So first things first, tell us about your personal YouTube channel. Sometimes you're on the Falling Tower YouTube channel to watch the first mm -hmm. show. Sometimes you're on Virtual TrekCon. You're very often on the seventh rule, but you have a personal YouTube channel. Did people know about that? I hope so. But if not, inform them. You better <laughs> go do. subscribe, everybody. <laughs> Please do. I, and it's still... Um, a work in progress, obviously, but, or maybe not obviously, but uh, it is something that I do hope to expand a little bit more as I explore my journey through acting, you know, and mm -hmm. um, this will hopefully help, you know, uh, uh, focus, or, ah, I lost the words. <laughs> this will Arnest. hopefully harness or help me practice harness you know the, the, practice my skills as an actor as mm -hmm. a singer and and keep that that wheel well oiled <laughs> or that mm. gear well oiled so mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. yes so there will be new songs posted on there um possibly some monologues 
hopefully some scenes, maybe if I can find scene partners to, you know, come play with me. And, um, and you know, just a fun, fun place to come visit and, and see. And if you see anything you like on, on my YouTube channel, maybe give me a job, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so this is me. like, this is going to be like an online resume. Not, not only are you going to be practicing. Portfolio. Yeah, portfolio in case and improving yeah. your skills, but you're also going to be showcasing your skills. Yeah. 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 Do you think if people enjoy your stuff, they should share it around? Yes, they should. <laughs> they should share away, share away. <laughs> and and like and subscribe. Like mm -hmm. you no, know, they should like and subscribe to this channel. So and what comment. What videos do you have comment. on there so far? Well, I do have some monologues, um, some songs. I've uh, done some animation for some music videos on there as well. Um, Wait. What? Yeah. yeah. Animation? Mm -hmm. Like I hand drew some animation and then put it all together and edit it into a video. Wow. Nice job. That's hard to do. Wow. Yeah, it took a lot of work. <laughs> Patience. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. <laughs> Hand drawn animation. Yeah. 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 Are you listening, Disney? <laughs> DreamWorks. <laughs> DreamWorks. <laughs> yeah. I, I actually really like the animation of this. Yeah, I was fine with it too. I noticed the same. I don't like mm -hmm. animation that's too stylized or too crazy. They're trying to put themselves into the animation. Like this is mm -hmm. fine. This is like old school cartoon animation. We yeah. get it. It looks fine yeah. to me. Too. What kind of animation it's do fun. you do, Melissa? Well, um, I there's no style. It is a Melissa style. <laughs> yeah, it's it's how I draw, and um, uh, some of it is is kind of realism but there's a lot of fantasy elements to it hmm. um of you know things that i've created there's a video on there called um take on me because that no. was already animated <laughs> <laughs> no but the, there, there's a similar style well no, maybe mm -hmm. not there's black and white and there's some color and you know wow but yeah, there, it took a long time to draw. So. I bet. Jeez. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, you have your homework. Go check out that video as soon as this video is over and go check out that channel and like all the videos on them, all of them, and subscribe. <laughs> subscribe. And subscribe. Comment how much you like the videos. Yay. Yep, share them with your friends and family. Mm hmm. Sure. And now it is time for everybody's favorite moment of the week. What's what are you doing, Michael? The bottom line. <laughs> That's what we call it. It's called the bottom line, aka the terrible twos. Everybody calls it the terrible twos. Michael calls it the bottom, bottom line. line. Uh, it's the final two questions of the show. The two most important questions. Question number one is Michael Kenyon Rosenberg. Here we go. We're going in hard. We're going in hot. Scale of one to 10. Hard and hot. You know, we're turning up the heat. Scale of one to hot 10. Anna. Um, so yeah, this one, like I mentioned, I liked it. It's, it, it's cute, as Rico would say. It's cute. Magical. It's cute. It's cute. It's magical, as I always like. That's why Fantasy Month to me has been great, because we're oh. watching all these cool magical shows and love it yeah so magical it takes place on a magical world but there's also like technology too so it's a mix of magic tech techno magic technology and uh i quite enjoyed it i thought that the pace of the story was well done and i never watched shira or that much he-man when i was younger so what? unlike both of you i'm not traumatized by the changes made <laughs> and uh so for this first episode i give it a 7.7 .7. wow boy oh boy wow. yeah. 
yeah. Seven foot like seven like is how lot. tall a uh, Boban is. And I believe yeah, Manute Bol we're not was... talking about that. We're talking about uh, Prince Shira, Princess of Power, and the Princesses of Power. George Murison. Remember George Murison on like the bullets? I believe he was seven seven. Manute yeah. Bol was said to be nope, seven seven, nope. but he's more like seven six. Anyway. So basically what we are now are going to do is ask Melissa what she, what she would give this on. <laughs> Why are you changing 10. the subject? We we're talking about basketball, Michael. And you you know changed it. the subject. I was talking about She-Ra. <laughs> She-Ra. She-Ra. Um, okay. So, yes, I maybe I am a bit biased. <laughs> but um, for me, this She-Ra didn't inspire me to be a powerful woman like the old shira inspired me to okay. be a powerful woman um even as a kid you know a, so um and there was some great stuff and and i like i like the initial opening uh, and with the how the music came in and and the the um, animation was great, and I do like the woman who plays Shadow Weaver. Uh, she's been in a lot of other stuff, and um, I, this is the first time I've ever heard her do voiceover work okay. for a show. But um, she's always been a uh, an effective actress, in my opinion. Um, so, Lorraine Toussaint. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't thrilled with it overall. Uh, I didn't hate it, but you know, so I, I'm, I'm going to give it a 4.9. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. As, as, as regular fans of the show will know, according to the Sussman scale, that means she didn't like it. Well, no, he says four forward no he five. clarified that below five he keeps moving the goal like post. above five yeah no, so it's that's, just teetering that's what i took as his yeah. yeah well let's just say that a 4.9 is the ultimate non-committal answer because if you think about it it's like somebody that's <laughs> it is. non-committal is five like, is five is most well, no because somebody that's non-committal is gonna be like i'm just gonna give it a five right down the middle but then if you can't commit to giving it you're like well i don't want it to say that it's like perfectly down okay 4.9 there okay now now i'm just off ah, to the side i'm not or or five no. five point one five no because because josh was pretty clear that <laughs> five and above that you liked it and five below you didn't like it and 4.9 was i almost liked it yeah josh sussman lives rent free on this show <laughs> definitely <laughs> mention him a lot so stay tuned everybody you might see him again soon maybe even next week you never know we know I almost but you liked don't. it maybe that is non-committal mm -hmm. okay so i'll tell y'all on a scale of one to ten what i would give this show i'm going to give this one a straight six and i'll tell you why mm. because that's what it deserves so question number two, it, okay, well, a little bit more on that is that, yeah, there are some things that we weren't that great about it, but I can tell that this is going to be a very good show in, in the long run. And again, like with all things that are derivative of source material or have an existing franchise, they're going to be a lot more patient. They're not trying to grab you in that first episode because they feel like most people that know She-Ra are going to watch She-Ra and are going to give it a little bit more leeway and they don't really need to to put their claws into you on that first episode they're like they'll watch they'll they'll stick with it and with the foundation that they laid i can tell it's going to get bigger and better as the story progresses so i have a feeling this is a, a series that's actually going to be much higher than a six but this first episode itself in a vacuum all we're watching is this first episode right now is a six However, I got Ryan to start saying Shira. Yeah, well, I think that's what they called it, Shira. I don't know. I think it's Shira. Whatever. Shire. So, uh, question number two is the real nitty gritty. This is the one that Netflix tunes in for. For the purposes mm -hmm. of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Shira, 
and the princesses of power. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet, Michael Canyon Rosenberg, would you, of your own volition, watch the second episode? Part two of well, the sword. Unlike Melissa, this she did inspire me to be powerful. Woman, so <laughs> I would, I would watch the second episode. I'm kind of dying to know what happens. Like what happens now that she's got the sword? What happens now that she's she Like what's going to happen now? What, how is the horde going to react? How's, how's Katja, Katra going to react? You know, I almost said Katya, but uh, Katra, yeah. Well, Katra is a Vulcan react? thing. Oh, Kat, Katra, they said, yeah, Katra. Is mm. what, how, that's how they pronounce it, Katra. So how is she going to react? What's Hordak look like? I don't even, I never saw Hordak in the original He-Man or she Skull so. face. Mm-hmm. Thanks for spoilers, jeez. So he's exactly the same as Skeletor. Okay, so they're brothers different. too. He's okay. got a thing. No, they look different. And but there's ears. like bones all the way around his thing and, and here and yeah. you're just spoiling it more okay so i'll be watching because i want to see these things so i bet mike was like sweating wanting to watch the next episode he's like oh i really uh, but i gotta wait uh this is killing me kind of except i just watched it this morning before we recorded so i didn't have time to anyway you <laughs> Oh, you didn't watch the second. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I saved it for this morning too because I want to feel like Saturday morning cartoons. I want to have like that morning cartoon <laughs> feeling. But it's Wednesday. Know. I know, but I, that's why I just wanted a Monday uh, it's a, Wednesday a morning evening. feeling. That's all I wanted when I watched it. <laughs> so, Melissa Longo, would you of your own volition watch the second episode out of curiosity, anger, or otherwise? Spite. Um, rage. Actually, no, I won't. Wow. Is that a Um, first? Yeah, I'm not actually interested to see where it goes. And I have other shows that I'd rather watch. (laughs) Hmm. Well, having other shows that you'd rather watch is a completely different topic. What we're asking is, would you watch the second episode of this show? Irregardless. First? Irregardless. Watch the first? Yes. How much time you have. But She-Ra, no. <laughs> I wasn't as, I'm not as curious to see what happens to them. I, I, I personally was not invested in the characters enough to say, oh, what, what's going to happen next? You know what may have been lacking? Fun. I think watching He-Man and She-Ra back in the day was fun. This was a little less had fun. fun. Yeah. Okay, so I would not watch the second episode, uh, you know. Obviously. I mean, it, it certainly was closer than I expected, uh, you know, because it's fine. I have a feeling it's going to get good. And our friend Muhammad was trying to spoil it, saying how great it is later mm-hmm. on. So <laughs> that, just, that just piques the interest a little bit more and also validates the idea that it does seem like as a series it'll be good theoretically we'll see but no i would not of my own volition watch the second episode um although there you have it i do have a slight curiosity as to when the the other characters get introduced and what's going to happen there and all that so we'll have to ask mike to no, let us not know. going to tell you no i'm going to tell you yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you. If I, if, if I do continue to watch this, I will not tell you when other characters show up. I will I say that I did it. watch the preview after, like the trailer. And that kind mm. of piqued my interest, but not enough to watch the second. Interesting. <laughs> I'll go check that out. Uh, all right, everybody, that's it. You've gotten our answers. Now, in the comments below, tell us what you'd like us to review. Type in WTF He-Man. But remember, we've already done the first He-Man, the second He-Man, but not the brand new He-Man. There's, there's like, yeah, a new one that we haven't done yet. Mm-hmm. Or well, Shira, I think the brand the new one we just did. No. The brand, the Kevin Smith one. There's a new yeah, one out. Yeah, there's a new that. one that came out literally the year after Another the new one? Kevin Smith one. The Kevin Smith one was like 2020. There was a new one that came out in no, 2021. The Kevin Smith one came out last year. Well, there's a new one one since then. There's literally a new one since then. I think think there's a new one that was like, I think there's a new one that came out just before the Kevin Smith Mm -hmm. one. It was after. 
Uh, okay. I'm going to look it up real quick while Melissa stalls us by telling us her least favorite character. On this show was Glimmer. Mm -hmm. Obviously, was I could have guessed that. Okay, so I could have guessed that. Her so second least favorite, Bo. So look at this. This is the, the world of Hemen. I <laughs> uh, Okay, so Masters of the Universe Revelation, that came out in whatever that was, 2021. You're right, Michael, right? Yeah. Then there's this. Look at this He-Man. How is that oh, even He-Man? Oh. How is this? How the heck is this even He-Man, right? And this was well, maybe it's 2022, different... and they already have two seasons. What? Yeah. What? That's, what the heck? There was a literally Netflix released two another, new there's another He Man series in 2021 and 2022, totally different from each other. Right. It's very and strange. There's another one too. There's another one that maybe came out in 2020. Really? Okay. That, so this... I have a question. Um, <laughs> if He Man is He Man, why are they going to make He Man a kid? Oh yeah, he's he boy. Not a man yet. He would be he boy, right? And why? Why does He Man look like uh, an X Men? Right? He looks like an X Men. Is right? that a picture of He Man? Or I don't know, is but that that's the main picture character. for He Man. Right. So weird. Who knows? Netflix does weird stuff with their thumbnails, though. Sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not always the main character. Well, it looks like there's right. a Orco there. Anyway, so. Hey, we'd be willing to do another one more He-Man, even if it's He-Boy. And yeah. uh, so we will check that out. Well, like so, I said, there's there's at least two more He-Mans then that, that we haven't watched. Are you sure there's another one? Oh, yeah. There's one. Yes. There's one that, that looks like a, like a. It came out Ryan maybe like 15 or years ago or something. Oh, no, no. Just a couple years ago. Yes. Maybe there's three He-Mans. I remember that yet. one too. They're like super short and stumpy, right? Right, right, right. right. <laughs> that You're right. That's another He-Man. But then there was Aww. one that, that came out. Cute. There was one that came out maybe 15 or 20 years ago. Hmm. And our friend Aaron Musicant was obsessed with it. And he watched it <laughs> and collected all these toys from it and stuff. And he was all for it. But that was maybe right around 20, 2000. So that means there's, right, so there's three, three more He-Man he shows <laughs> for us to watch. Ryan's giddy over that. How many of she has? <laughs> okay, we need to move on. Yeah. Yeah, there's uh, not that many She-Ra's. Uh, two or three She-Ra's. That's all we know. Yeah. Uh, Probably a couple more of My Little Ponies, too. So. Well, yeah, they keep redoing those, right? My Little Pony, My Little Pony. So Ryan's gonna tell us now what this podcast was. <laughs> I'm looking for the I'm looking for the He Man with the, like the short people. Okay, well, don't worry about that later. And we need to wrap I this up. See the He Man with short people. <laughs> yeah. So basically, what we're trying to say is, I'm just buying it. I can't find it. <laughs> Let me just type in short people. And uh, right. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up now. Right? It's, it's, they're like they're like stumpy. Yeah, they are short. Yes, that's the one I was thinking of. And this podcast was... Okay. Um... Yeah, you're right. I can't find it. People all right, everybody in the live chat, Ryan. let us know in the live chat and in the comments below all the different He-Man uh iterations and where we can find yeah, them yeah and then we'll have a he-man month <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll have to yeah okay we're gonna this, have, to have to come out with at least one more what we're trying to say is this podcast was painful for michael at the end yeah especially at the end yeah uh this podcast <laughs> had a lot of bickering Ooh, and snickering oh, oh this podcast was unpredictable <laughs> it definitely was <laughs> it That's definitely was wasn't are. it unpredictable. anyway so, so every like share it 
<laughs> subscribe, share it with your friends, tell us what to watch in the comments below. And don't forget what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg always likes to say, which is <laughs> don't register to be an organ donor at donatelife.net. And when you're done with that, don't forget to watch the first of things. Thank you.